the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Amen. You're living in the greatest hour of the church. There is Israel, the church, and the nations. And glory be to God, the church has a mandate for this hour. I believe this is the day of the Lord. And we're about to be in the right place at the right time with the right message. And let me tell you something. That mandate is good news. Glory be to God. It's time to be about our Father, our Heavenly Father's business. And we're going forth like never before. Glory be to God. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message today. I thank you, Lord God, that you're doing exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or even imagine. I thank you, Lord God, that you gave us good news. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, that you're doing great and mighty things in this hour, and we're rising up. We're going forth. We're going to another level, and we give you the praise. And we thank you, Lord God. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Turn with me over here to 1 Thessalonians and um, chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's, let's get in the word this morning. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump, <laughs> hallelujah, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, that word there is rapture, come on somebody, be caught up together with, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, hallelujah, wherefore comfort, comfort one another with these words, hallelujah. You couldn't comfort people if uh, we were talking about, you know, well, we're going to go through the tribulation and it's going to be horrible and then all kind, I'm in the end of the world and blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> no, we are rising up. Come on. And we are rising up in more than one way. We're going up in the rapture, glory to God. Now, why is there a rapture? Well, it's because there's going to be an event in heaven called the marriage supper of the Lamb. It is going to be the reading of this marriage covenant or the next covenant for the next uh, uh, the next age or what we would call the, uh, the thousand year millennial reign. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so we will go up to heaven and we will hear the reading of the next covenant. We've had many covenants, uh, the Edemic covenant, the Adamic covenant, the Noahic covenant, uh, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, all kinds of covenants including this covenant we have right now called the covenant in the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so we are rising up or we, we are caught up together with him in the air and we will not miss that event. The trump will sound and we will go forth. Now, a marriage supper to a Jewish person and uh, I, I'm, uh, you know, my, my family uh, has Jewish roots and so I get into that Jewish roots. And, and there's something different about the Jews and the Gentiles. There's something different about our Western uh, ways of doing things. Uh, here, we have a wedding, you know, in the afternoon. We go to the honeymoon that night. Jewish people have always had a seven-day feast. Now, there's going to be a seven, or it means to become complete. Glory be to God. We're coming together with Christ and becoming complete with him complete in him in that seven days up in heaven, come on, or seven years, it's got to be a seven, seven in heaven, glory be to God, and we will be there, oh, we'll be having a party, glory be to God, and it'll be a time like no other time, glory to God. So we will comfort one another with these words that we are not going to be here for the tribulation. Uh, we have to be... A, in the, uh, the feast of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we will rejoice. Go down here to chapter 5. There's no breaks here in the original. Uh, 
But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need I write to you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Let me tell you something. It'll be a sudden one. Everybody be just about their business doing this and doing that. And just like in the time of Noah where people were, you know, marriage and giving a marriage and just, you know, going about life. Well, suddenly, just a suddenly, I, I, I love suddenly. Glory to God. And this is a good one. Because suddenly we'll be caught up into heaven for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it says, uh, uh, thief, as a thief in the night, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now there is Israel, there is the church, and there is the nations. And let me tell you something. There's going to be those who wish they had received the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, you can receive it right now as we bring it forth to you. Notice, but you, brethren, are not in darkness. Talking about the church. That the day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light. We're not in darkness. We are the children of light. We will know the season. We will know the signs of the times. It says, uh, we are of the... Uh, we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for, uh, and for a helmet, the hope of our salvation. Let me tell you something. In these last days, the church is rising up in faith, hope, and love. Glory be to God. And, and the greatest of those is love. We are going forth with a message of love, a message of good news, a message that you don't have to be a part of, of the judgment of this world because we are going forth in this hour as the church of the mighty God. Hallelujah. So it says here that we will uh, walk in faith, hope, and love. Verse 9, for God has not appointed us to wrath. Now I want you to hear that. The church is not appointed to wrath. We are not going to be here for the tribulation. The tribulation is the wrath of God. That is going to take place. Well, some people say, well, in the wrath of God, the last three and a half years, well, we've got to be up in heaven for a seven. Come on. We've got to be up in heaven for the marriage supper, the marriage feast, and the feast always has to be a seven because God ordained that a, a marriage covenant causes you to be complete. Two becoming one. Glory be to God. Now, I know there's been some people say, well, I don't believe we're the bride. I don't believe we're going to be coming together like that. Well, let me tell you something. We are going to be one with Christ. We are going to be one with him. And that day is coming soon. Oh, look at the signs of the times. We know the seasons. We know we're in it right now. And uh, uh, Jesus is the last Adam. And the first Adam got his bride from his side. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. Jesus will get his bride from his body, and we will fill the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem, is, it says, is our adornment. It is literally, uh, it's like putting on the wedding dress. Glory to God. And now, if people are going to get over into you know, female and, and male and this and that. No, no, no. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a covenant of becoming one with Christ. And that's what Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed, Father, I pray that they'll be in me as, as I am in thee. In other words, his prayer was one day that we would be one with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not rich. <laughs> when you realize what's about to happen, he said, comfort you. Comfort one another with these words. Now he says, we're not appointed to wrath. We're not going to be here. The church will not be here. But to obtain salvation by 
uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also you do. So in other words, this whole message is good news. He says, I want you to comfort people in the last days uh, about this message, comfort one another and edify one another. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you uh, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort, uh, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil to any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. These are the things we're supposed to be doing right now. Uh, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. Now, I want you to notice it didn't say for everything. It said in everything. We don't, we don't praise God for the negative stuff going on, but we praise God in the midst of all the darkness that our God has overcome it all. Hallelujah. And it says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. In other words, don't go around saying, well, the gifts are gone for today. Just talk about the last days. Don't despise prophecy. Don't, don't, don't uh, say, well, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't believe that happens today. Well, I don't care what you believe. Read the book. <laughs> You've got to begin to believe what the book says. And the book tells us we are given gifts. And first it came to the apostles and then to the 70 and then to the whole church. Why? It empowers us to go forth as the children of God. Hallelujah. So it says, quench not the spirit, despise not prophecy, uh, prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearances of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God... Uh, I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. Hallelujah. God is the author and finisher of your faith. God is trying to get a hold of you, and, and he's using my comfort and my my words today to get to you, to tell you the greatest days of the church are upon us. We're rising up. We're going forth. God said, this, comfort one another in the church with these words. This is the day we're about to go to the greatest time. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the heavens, we're about to be with our Jesus. We're about to see him face to face. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Woo, hallelujah. Uh, I, mm, <laughs> amen. Uh, you know, you look at Joshua chapter one, uh, verse six. It says, only be strong and of good courage. You know, you look at that word courage and you look at the word encourage. Encourage means to uh, urge someone or I mean, just get somebody to a point of believing for great things. We are to believe for great things. God wants us to meditate on the word, not the world. Meditate on the word both day and night, and then, hallelujah, you'll prosper and have good success. You'll go forth and, and, and be blessed, hallelujah. Well, uh, it didn't say listen to CNN all day long. It didn't say meditate on what the news is saying all day long. It didn't say uh, get wrapped up in all the darkness of what's going on right now. No, it said get in the word of God and rise up in the word and know the reason you were born and keep, I mean, just keep pumping that word inside of you because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Turn with me over here to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. We've got a mandate. Acts chapter 13, and let's go down here to uh, 
Well, let's just start in verse 1. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and uh, Simeon that was called Niger and, and Lucius of Cyrene and Maimon, uh, which had been brought up uh, with Herod, uh, the tetrarch, and Saul. Now notice the word prophets. Barnabas, his name literally means son of encouragement. And that word encouragement uh, is also translated consolation, but it, it means to urge someone to strong faith. Hallelujah. How many know Saul had a Barnabas? God's putting somebody in your life to build you up and bring you to the next level. You know, when you look at the book of Barnabas, uh, now I know it wasn't canonized, but a lot of people, I mean, there's some quotes in there and, and uh there's some references there, and, and, and let me tell you something. When you look at the book of Barnabas, Barnabas actually says, a day unto the Lord is as a thousand years, and Jesus will return in 6,000 years. Hallelujah. Well, what is that talking about? It's talking about uh, the scope of, of, of time from Adam to the return of Christ. Well, we're in that hour. We're there. And the prophet Barnabas was saying these types of things to Paul. And, and he was encouraging Paul. And Paul, I mean, everybody needs somebody with a prophetic word that will cause you to rise up and know where to go with things. You know, Timothy had a Paul. Paul spoke and prophesied. Literally, it says, if you look here, it says in uh, 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 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, that he had a prophetic word of what his ministry would be. Hallelujah. Man, I'll tell you what, you get a word from somebody. I'll never forget, I was uh, preaching and, and this elderly couple came forward and the Lord said to me, they're going to go on a mission trip. And I thought, my goodness, they're too old to go on a mission trip. I mean, this couldn't be you, Lord. <laughs> and the Lord said, you tell them they're going on a mission trip. I said, well, uh, you know, and great men of faith that I was, I, I said, wait, uh, <clears throat> does a missions trip mean anything to you? <laughs> and they looked up at me and they just began tears rolling down their cheeks. And they said, we were praying for confirmation. They said, Lord, if we don't get a confirmation in the next couple of days, we won't go. But if you'll confirm it, we'll go. And you know, they went on that missions trip, got so excited, did such exploits that they went on several uh, more missions trips after that. Glory to God. God's got a word inside of you. God wants to give that word prophetically in this hour to somebody to encourage them, to raise them up, to go forth, because we were born for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, turn with me to the book of Revelation. Now, I want to show you something right here in the very beginning. Revelation chapter 1. And uh, how many know that <laughs> this is good news for the church? I said, this is good news. That's not doom and gloom. My goodness, no. People preaching good, uh, uh, people preaching doom and gloom. Oh, we're about to be in Armageddon. Well, uh, you got to remember there's Israel. There's the church, and there is the nations, and we got to know who we are and what's going on with us. Now, Revelation chapter 1, and let's just start in verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, notice it didn't say the revelation of the tribulation. It didn't say the revelation of the blah, 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 blah. No, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, gave to John, to show to his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and to all things that he saw. He says, blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. This is the only book that comes with a blessing. It says, 
you will be blessed. If you're the church, you will be blessed if you read this book. There's a blessing that comes with reading this book. There's a blessing with understanding the times and, and your place in it. Glory to God. And, and it, it talks about becoming, uh, uh, he's the prince of kings and we're the, uh, he has made us kings and priests and oh my goodness, it's it talking all good things for the church. Glory to God. We are living in the greatest hour of mankind. We're living in an hour like never before, and we're going forth in this hour with good news and blessing, and we've got to realize there's not a time to be preaching doom and gloom, not to the church anyway. Hallelujah. And you know what? The unbeliever needs to hear this word so that they will not want to be a part of anything else that, because they'll realize they'll escape this time of wrath. Glory be to God. Now, hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I love this. How many love the word of God? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, go down here to, uh, well, let's start in verse 1. Verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. Amen. Well, that was for them. No, this, this covenant is for you. If all the gifts and all of the things that God gave to the church, were everything in this covenant was just for the early church, then salvation was only for the early church. Let me tell you something. Not only is everything in this covenant for you, but salvation is for you. You can't, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, uh, we have salvation, but we don't have the gifts. No, this covenant is one covenant. This is the covenant for the church. And so we have, uh, we have salvation. Glory be to God. We have gifts. We have all these things because we know who we are. Glory be to God. Now, it says, uh, uh, and it says, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. So in other words, the highest level is to prophesy that God wants you to begin. How many know it says, my sheep hear my voice? Well, we've got to begin to tune in so that we can speak forth life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. It says, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God, for no man understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he that prophesies, he that prophesies speaks to men to edification. There's that word edification again. And exhortation and comfort. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. Hallelujah. I would that you all spoke with tongues. Now, Paul's, Paul's not talking against speaking in tongues. He just says it's better. If, if you speak in tongues, that there's someone there to interpret so that everyone will be blessed. But the greatest thing, now notice this, it says, I, I wish that you would all uh, speak in tongues, but rather that you would prophesy. Now, notice what that's saying. Paul is saying, I wish that all of you would prophesy. <laughs> that all of you would be in so in tune with, with the Spirit that you would, you would hear the voice of God. There's a still small voice that speaks to your spirit that you know you've heard from God. My sheep hear my voice. So it goes on to say, For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So in other words, it's about edifying. It's about comforting one another. It's about having a word of good news and a word in due season from the Lord that you know that you know <laughs> you're in the right place, you're chosen of God, and he is, he is telling you what your marching orders are. Hallelujah. We're going forth. We're rising up. Hallelujah. Uh, it, God's going to use you like never before. God, I'll tell you what, I, I was blessed to, to prophesy over the leadership, the prime minister and different ones uh, there in uh, uh, the Marshall Islands. And, and they... they they actually had people uh, ask me to call them, and I, and I called them, and later I got to meet with some of them and, and prophesy into their lives and literally change some things of a nation. God's about to put you before kings. 
God's about to put you in high place. God's about to put you before CEOs of companies. I was brought into a, a company in, in California that was a steel company, and they asked me to pray because they were about to file bankruptcy. And I went up into that boardroom. I first I marched around the whole building, uh, that whole steel company, and then and just dedicated it to the Lord. And then I went to that, uh, the boardroom and they were all, you know, in there. And, and before they said, well, you know, uh, they, they really didn't know what I was going to do. But I, first thing I did was I prayed the sinner's prayer with the president of that corporation. And he gave his life to the Lord. And I then began to tell them that God was calling them into Asian markets. And, and they said, you know, we thought about that, but we didn't do it. And they did it. And the whole company turned around. Why? Because God's about to put his people in the right place at the right time with his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time. It's high time for the good things of God. Amen. Uh, how many know that God, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10 says, he calls the end from the beginning and we're his children. We're supposed to know the things that are about to take place and bring forth the good news. How many know gospel means good news? Amen. It'll comfort you, edify you, raise you up in this hour. You know, people say, well, what about the vaccines and the, and, the, and, and the coronavirus and this plague and that plague coming on the earth and blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you something. God will protect you. Read Psalm 91. Come on. God is about to do great and mighty things in this hour. Uh, turn with me quickly to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 5. And... Uh, Let's go down here, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Now notice this. Oh, it's a time like no other time. We've got to know that this is the day of the Lord. Now, I don't know how many more years we've got, but I'll tell you what, it's winding down and you know it. Isaiah chapter 5, and let's go down here, uh, verse 20. Woe to them that call evil good, <laughs> and good evil that put darkness for light how many know we're the children of light we shouldn't be doing this and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter you know you turn on the evening news tonight and, and you hear people saying things that are just evil you turn on entertainment and movies and TV shows and and, and they're saying those things which are contrary to God, contrary to the morals of God, contrary to life. And they're speaking evil as if it was good today. Well, this is, a, this is really a prophetic word for you right now. <coughs> it says, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. Verse 21, woe to them that are wise in their own eyes. <laughs> and prudent in their own sight. You know, they, they think they got, the people you listen to on the news and the people you hear out there in the world, they think they're smart. But how many know the wisdom of God makes them out to be fools? Uh, it says, woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men uh, of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward justify the wicked for reward. How many people have gotten on the news and they paid them a lot of money so that they would line up with whatever the news was, uh, the agenda uh, for that day? There's a lot of people today doing different things uh, for the reward or for the money of it. And let me tell you something. God will guide you, provide for you, li literally cause you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. He'll bless you going in and bless you going out. And you don't need to do any compromise to the point where you're believing the lie and doing things for reward of those that are in darkness. Now, it says, uh, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. In other words, they're doing evil. They're taking money for it. They're speaking things that are not of God and uh, literally taking away the righteousness that God has for them. Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the flames consume the chaff, so their roots shall be as rottenness and their blossoms shall go up as dust because they have cast away the word of the Lord. My, 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 my. 
we've got we've got to rise up in this hour and go forth like never before. Hallelujah. I'm going to end in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Matthew chapter 12. I hope you got something out of this. Gospel means good news, and we should be comforting one another, edifying one another, and rising up like never before. Matthew chapter 12, and let's go down here to uh, verse 34. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Thank you, Jesus. It says, O generation of vipers, <laughs> Jesus will not happy at the moment. <laughs> o generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? Well, you wonder why they twisted everything today. They don't know how to speak good. Uh, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you keep getting the word in you, you keep getting the edification of the word, you're going to speak positive things. Uh, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. An evil man uh, out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. They don't know how to do anything different. That's what they fill themselves up with, and that's what comes out of their mouth. But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Well, the day of judgment is right around the corner. And the words that you speak are either going to bring people into the kingdom, bring people into kingdom principles, and that they will rise up in the word of the living God and know the truth and have the truth make them free. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The words that come out of your mouth matter. And we're going to speak the word. And we're going to edify one another. And we're going to lift them up and give them the good news. Hallelujah. If you're not born again today, I want to give you an opportunity to receive this good news. And it's a simple prayer. But it comes from your heart. Pray this prayer with me right now. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Change me. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. If you meant that prayer, your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And get a hold of a good Bible. Get into a good word church. Uh, if you live in the Dallas uh, Rockwall area, come on. When we get back into our building soon, we'll be looking for you. Hallelujah. And... Uh, Begin to have a prayer life with, with, uh, with the Lord and begin to know His voice because that voice is about to come out your mouth and you're about to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. If today you're feeling the cares of this world and all the things that are going on and, and uh, maybe you're sick, I want to pray for you as well. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one right now. Be made whole. There's the anointing. There's no distance in prayer. Receive that by faith. Peace on you. Healing. The glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we're going to take up our offering. This is our church service. And we thank you for all your faithful. We thank our faithful people of Great Faith Church that have been giving. We thank you that they have given their tithes and offerings. And uh, you can do that right now by going to the link there, our gfaith.org, our website. We've got an online giving button. You can click on that. Or you can give uh, by clicking on the contact page and going to our mailing address and, and, and send uh, your offering in. We thank you so much. We call your seed blessed. And I know as you give, it's coming back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'll go ahead and, and, and make sure you like this message I, you know, so that it'll keep going up in, in the, uh, you know, of all the likes so people will want to look at it because I believe this is a timely word. And uh, share this word. Go ahead and share it. Share it on, on your page and, and let people know the good news of Jesus Christ. And remember, God has something great with your name on it.